Hello everyone and I hope you're all doing very well. So in the previous video we studied in a hornet what effect a change in ambient air temperature had on the power or the thrust created by engines. How did it affect the engine performance? And what we found in that test with an increase in 33 degrees centigrade of ambient temperatures everything else considered the static thrust was reduced by 11.5 which is a really considerable amount. Now as well in that test we almost accidentally found out that with an increase of 33 degrees ambient temperature we also had a reduction in high speed drag of around about 10%, just over 10%. But the one thing we haven't really considered is lift. How does a change in ambient temperature affect the lift created by an aircraft? Now in reality as I'm sure you all know if you increase the ambient temperature of a fluid like air then you decrease its density and therefore you decrease the lift performance of a lift creating body like a wing or the aeroplane as a whole so as temperature goes up lift goes down so everything else remaining the same if I want to fly exactly the same profile when the ambient temperature is hotter then I have to either go faster or fly at a higher angle of attack or you know have my flaps out I have to find a way of creating more lift so what we want to prove now is that this is modeled correctly in DCS now, I tried several different ways of showing this and this I think is going to be the easiest way I'm going to fly this Hornet and I'm going to fly it as if I were landing it I'm going to use the angle of attack indexer here and I'm going to use the angle of attack error bracket which is a little E bracket which become visible when my gear and my flaps are out and I'm going to use them to fly at the landing angle of attack now I can't actually remember what angle of attack that is it's either 8 degrees or uh, 11 degrees I've forgotten the one it doesn't actually matter as all I care about is that it is a static and non-changing angle of attack and I'm going to measure at what speed I have to be traveling to be able to maintain that angle of attack then I'll increase the temperature so it's hotter and I'll repeat it and if DCS has modeled the lift correctly then I should have to fly faster at the same angle of attack when the ambient temperature is higher so that's what we'll expect to see other than the ambient temperature changing everything else is going to stay the same the angle of attack will stay the same obviously the weight of the vehicle will stay the same we've turned fuel burn off the only thing will change is the ambient temperature so let's get on it. it should be a very quick easy test if we go I'm gonna slow down and we'll do both tests at sea level they don't have to be perfectly uh, accurate you know within a few hundred feet will be accurate enough for this test gear out perhaps down So what I have to do, just in case you're interested, I want to get my path vector, my velocity vector here, aligned with the horizon. It's important in this test that I don't have any upwards or downwards velocity, vertical, vertical velocity. To make the test fair, I'm going to have him on the horizon, which will also be in the middle of the angle of attack error bracket, which will also be this angle of attack indexer neutralized on the center circle. And it's, uh, might be a little bit awkward, but we'll get there. Fuel burn is turned off to make sure that that can't... Uh, Pollute the results. Yep. That's just about it there. I know we're not perfectly on the horizon, but you know, between friends, that's just a couple of pixels. So to fly, uh, sorry, I should have said with this test, we're at plus eight degrees centigrade at sea level. And that gives us 144 knots here. I think that's calibrated. It's not actually much use to us. The reason is this type of calibrated and or indicated airspeed is based on the air pressure, which is based on the air temperature. So we can't use that. Don't be fooled into thinking that. We need ground speed. To get ground speed, we can go from true speed uh, which we can get here. True speed is read out from the gain engine. That is 145 knots with no wind. That is 145 knots ground speed. Now we're going to repeat the test, but with the temperature turned up to 55 degrees centigrade, and we should see, if, if it's modeled correctly, an increase in the speed required to attain, where is it, angle of attack of 8 degrees, you can see there. Okay, here we go. We're now plus 50 degrees. Gear out, perhaps down. 
Let the trim sort itself out. Otherwise, exactly the same. No stores, full fuel, no fuel burn. I can already tell you that it feels a bit different driving in this heat. You can just feel, you can just feel it not biting the air quite as much. Which is exactly what I'd want to see. Okay, pretty much identical to what we got last time. Now look at that, 145 knots up in the hard, basically the same as what we had before. But remember, we can't use that. That there is essentially based on temperature. So that is not a valid empirical unit to use. What is, is down here, is our true speed with zero wind is essentially ground speed. So we can see it's different by, uh, so at 8 degrees it was 145 knots ground speed and which ground speed means the actual speed that we're moving across the ground, completely different thing to air speed. And at 50 degrees centigrade, ambient temperature at, you know, within a couple of hundred feet the same altitude, we've got 157 knots ground speed to attain, uh, we've slipped off angle of attack ever so slightly at 7.9 but, you know, between friends it, that is 8 degrees. So we could say, in that case, that with a delta increase of 42 degrees centigrade, that is a loss of lift, or an increase in speed at least, needed of about 8.3% that is. And so I suppose we can say uh, that it is um, a decrease in 8.3% of lift. And if lift were linearly proportional to speed, then I guess we could say for every one degree of ambient temperature, increase we lose uh, what is it 0.2% of lift now in reality I don't think lift and speed are linearly proportional but I guess you could still say as a rough rule of thumb between reasonable speeds you do lose 0.2% of lift for every one degree of ambient temperature so it's just something to bear in mind now we've only tested it in the Hornet but I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same or very similar in the other aircraft so that's it i think that's all we need to test so regards lift created it is modeled in dcs based on the temperature air density and whatnot i can't tell you if 0.2 percent lift per one degree of ambient temperature is correct but it all sounds you know relatively within the realms of reality to me so that sounds good let me know if you have any other thoughts on that and see you later